I'm going to talk now this morning with U.S. Congress District 26 candidate Carlos Curbelo. He has served on the Miami-Dade School Board since 2010. Carlos says that his campaign is about the people and ensuring that his generation and his children's generation continue to live and work in the greatest nation that our world has ever known. I've been talking to our neighbors here in District 26 for the last few weeks and people are frustrated with government. The economic recovery has left so many behind, especially young people who graduate from college saddled with debt and can't find a job. People are also frustrated with our politicians, from the IRS abusing its power to go after people based on their political beliefs, to absentee ballot fraud scandals here at home. People have had enough, and I understand why they're frustrated. I first moved to South Dade with my family almost 20 years ago. When my wife Ceci and I married in 2006, we decided to buy a home here. And this is where we're raising our two daughters, Sylvie and Carolina. I ran for school board in 2010, not because I needed a career, not because I needed a job, just because I felt I had something to contribute. And we've done a lot to improve the quality of education in our community. I'm proud of the work we've done. And that's why I'm running for Congress. I think it's time for our generation to ask for a seat at the table as our country debates important issues such as the future of Social Security, Medicare, and the national debt. These are all issues that aren't going to just affect our children, but they're going to affect us. As we embark on this journey, I need your advice, I need your comments, I need you to tell us what we're doing wrong and what we could be doing better. More importantly, I need your ideas for the future of our country, and I need your support. Thank you for taking the time to listen, and I look forward to seeing you along the way. Carlos, it's a pleasure having you on this morning. Thank you for joining me. Now, you were born and you were raised down here in South Florida, so you're obviously very passionate about the area and, and very passionate about your community. Why else did you decide to run? So uh, this is uh, where we're raising our family, my wife and I and uh, our two little girls. And uh, we just love uh, this community, this district, southern Miami-Dade County and of course the Florida Keys. And I've been on the school board uh, in Miami-Dade County for three years now. And one of the things I've discovered there is that government can work. Government can work to make people's lives better. I'll give you a few examples at the school district. We used to have 11 F-rated high schools. We have none today. Our budget used to be $6 billion. It's $4.5 billion today, yet we're getting better results. We used to have over 800 administrators, bureaucrats in Miami-Dade County that made over $100,000 a year. Today we have fewer than 400 bureaucrats that make that amount. So we have cut central office administration by 60%. At the same time, the graduation rate has gone from 60 to 80%. So Serving on the school board and being part of a success story has made me believe in government again. And I think that's what we need in Washington, a government where people come together despite their differences and find common ground to help the, uh, the State of the Union become stronger and help make people's lives better. Oh, great. Now, Carlos, let's talk about another issue that's very important down here, and that is flood insurance. What are your thoughts on flood insurance and how would you help to decrease the rates? Well, that's another issue where members of Congress from both parties should come together and realize the law that was passed last year uh, is just unfair. Uh, some people's um, insurance rates are going to skyrocket. Some people are going to be pushed out of their homes. I understand that the National Flood Insurance Program needs to be solvent. I support a solvent NFIP. However, we must do it in a gentle way that is respectful of the real estate market. Uh, so in other words, we should put the NFIP on a glide path to solvency and not shock the real estate market the way this law is doing. So I support a delay uh, of the Biggert Waters Act, which is the law that was passed last year, and certainly that the federal government completes the affordability study, which was uh, a condition under that law that's never been fulfilled uh, before it was supposed to uh, take effect. So certainly both parties should be able to work together to prevent uh, what can be a real estate crisis here in the Keys and in other parts of the state of Florida as well. 
Carlos, this district is very diverse. Key West is definitely more liberal. The Upper Keys and the mainland is more conservative with issues. How would you manage the diversity of this district and the area? Certainly, this is one of the most diverse districts in the country, politically, ethnically, racially. Uh, we have a great mix of people here. And although we don't agree on every issue, and like you said, there's differences uh, from the southern part of the district to the northern part of it, I do think that everyone is for a functional government, a government where Democrats and Republicans sit at a table and find common ground. I think all of us frowned upon this ridiculous government shutdown that we saw in Washington some weeks ago that really accomplished nothing. We even had uh, the incumbent uh, member of Congress that represents this district go on the House floor and call uh, uh, the opposition, uh, the opposing party, the Taliban. It's just this rancor and nastiness that I think everyone is sick of. People want a government that works for us, uh, that finds common ground, and that doesn't mean people have to compromise on their principles. It means that they have to figure out what they agree on and then work towards that to help improve the quality of life in our area. So although uh, we're very different in many ways, I think we do share that common interest in a government that makes this country stronger and that actually serves uh, uh, the people that, uh, that it's, uh, it represents. Carlos, you just mentioned your opponent and the incumbent right now, Congressman Joe Garcia. Now you have addressed Joe Garcia's support of Obamacare. That's been an issue to you. Tell me about your stand on Obamacare. So the sad part about Obamacare is that the very people that it was supposed to help are the people that it's hurting the most. A couple examples. First, young people. Uh, young people were very hopeful uh, that this health care law would uh, help them attain affordable health insurance. Yet we all know that uh, premiums for young people are skyrocketing 20, 30, 40, 50, sometimes 100 percent. Moreover, a lot of young people are getting kicked off their existing plans that they were supposedly going to be able to keep as long as they like them. So I support, I know we can't repeal the law because uh, Republicans don't have the votes to repeal it, but uh, short of that, we can make the law better so that it stops hurting young people so that uh, people who like their health care plans, as they were promised, get to keep them. That's what the president said. We should amend the law now, and, and I know that uh, Congress is going to take this up very soon. We should amend the law to fix that. Another group of people that this law is going to hurt, low-income people. I'll give you an example. Some of our uh, substitute teachers in the public school system they are low income earners because they don't, they don't have full time jobs. We are going to have to limit their hours. Substitute teachers used to be able to teach for weeks at a time. Now they're going to be limited to maybe four days a week, maybe eight out of ten days uh, uh, every two weeks because we simply can't afford to provide them coverage so their wages are going to go down. We need to get rid of this employer mandate so that it doesn't hurt working class people that really need these wages. So uh, I'm realistic. I know we can't get rid of this law, but we can certainly, again, find common ground, sit at the table. Uh, hopefully the president can say, yeah, uh, I made a promise uh, that this law doesn't keep, so let's, let's now change that uh, so that we stop hurting young people, low-income people, and everyone else that um, is suffering the consequences of this law. Carlos, is there anything else that you would like our viewers to know this morning about you and your run for congressman? Well, look, uh, this was a difficult decision uh, for me and my family. Uh, running for Congress, no matter what party you are, no matter what your ideas are, is a major sacrifice for anyone. It takes a lot of time. Uh, oftentimes it costs people money. Uh, but I consider the sacrifice worthwhile if I get the opportunity to move this country forward, to get us out of this bickering and stagnation where government really gets nothing accomplished. And uh, to be quite honest with you, I think I can do a better job than the incumbent. The incumbent won this seat by criticizing his opponent at the time, <coughs> the Republican incumbent, for ethical lapses and you know, all sorts of scandals and controversies. And guess what? This district is ba right back where it was uh, before the last election with more scandals and you know, government investigations and whatnot. So I think we kind of need to turn the page and move forward and allow new leaders the opportunity uh, to change this country and to make uh, the quality of life better for all of us that live in this area.
It's been a pleasure talking with you today. I will talk more with Carlos in the future. You can check out his interview along with other candidates on the Hometown PAC Key West website. Just check out the info you see on the bottom of the screen. Thank you for joining me this morning. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. If I'm